Welcome everyone. I'm going to be doing this unboxing today of this Ematic EWT826BK. I got this product off Fry's for $56 and I've seen it advertised for that price for quite some time so I'm wondering how it's going to perform. Well, some of the specs here. This does feature Windows 10. There is an 8 inch screen with 1280 by 800 resolution. It does have an IPS screen, IPS, so that's a very promising item that I look for because screen quality can be quite important. Uh, let's see, it has a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core Atom processor. I believe it's the Z3735. There is only one gigabyte of memory, which is quite limiting for a Windows tablet, so we're going to see how that works out. 32 gigabytes of flash memory. I'm not too concerned about that. That's a standard amount for these type of devices. Uh, it does have front and back cameras. There is a micro SD card slot, USB, and Bluetooth, of course. All right. So what do we got here with the actual tablet itself? Taking off the protective screen and just to have a brief look at the unit. It's the keyboard that I was really interested in and I'm going to tell you why. This product is kind of unique versus some of these others. So it does have this keyboard but this is an actual keyboard dock. So you can actually dock this tablet. You can see there's a pin connector here. And that pin connector mates to this pin connector at the bottom and it will snap in place. So let me try that out. Oh yes, so it actually has some sort of magnetic magnetic force going through and it's staying in place. And it looks pretty sturdy actually. So anyways, because it has this power connector, this keyboard does not need any type of batteries or uh, any type of power supply. This is important because if you've used some of these Bluetooth keyboards, you'll know what I'm talking about when you get frustrated realizing that you have to constantly keep the unit charged up and that's just another thing for you to worry about. So that kind of alleviates the need for that. Um, let me go ahead and get this powered up, see if it works. So it's booting up and the boot up screen is in portrait mode. So hopefully it will rotate automatically. Okay, so this is interesting, so I'm setting this up, but it is in portrait mode, so looks like I might have to undock for the time being just to get this set up. Okay, now it has rotated the screen, so maybe I can put it down onto the dock. All right, um, of course it is a touch screen, so you can use it that way. So the setup is taking a while. I have to say so far the screen quality is pretty good. I have very good viewing angles for just by looking at it. And it does seem to compare very favorably with other types of tablets. So I, I really like the screen quality here. By getting the task manager up and showing you folks its performance figures. This is in fact an Intel Atom Z3735 at 1.3 gigahertz. It does go into turbo mode up to 1.6 gigahertz. So it will do that dynamically. It is a dual core system. The memory configuration is confirmed to be one gigabyte. So it's not going to be larger than a gigabyte. That's all you're going to get. And as far as the disk storage system, so there's 32 gigabytes that it comes with. And we've got 17 gigabytes free. It did do a Windows update by updating all the components last night. It did take quite a bit of time to do that. So when you get the system, um, do expect to have Windows do its update and tie up the system resources for a little while. So 17 gigabytes does sound like a whole lot of space, but in my experience, you need to keep this storage area free because when Windows does its updates it needs the space so don't put too many applications on there. It does have a 32 what well supposedly it supports up to 32 gigabyte S micro SD card however I did plug in a 128 gigabyte Samsung 
Evo SDXC, and it recognized it just fine. There was no problem with it whatsoever. It was really fast. And that will definitely be your best option if you're going to be looking at expandable storage for this unit. What I'm going to do now is load up Google Earth, which I downloaded last night. Uh, this will give you a indication as to how the performance of the unit is because Google Earth is a very demanding application and it will work best with a mouse because tablet mode with Google Earth does not seem to work too well with pinch zoom and things like that. As you can see the graphics, I mean it's, it's fairly quick, it's rendering not too bad. I'm zooming into street level here. It's loading up through the wireless system and the wireless system is a 2.4 gigahertz only band so it does not support 5 gigahertz. So the zoom is pretty good. I don't have any problems with too much lag here. It's, it's loading pretty well. Try going into street view and see how it's going to respond to that. Okay, not bad. That's not bad at all actually. This is very usable. Okay, next I'm going to try out the keyboard and show what it's like for you folks. So I'm going to be using Notepad and just using the built-in keyboard. My impression is that the keys are pretty small. They're, it could be bigger. So I, I'm just having a hard time typing overall. I mean, it's very uncomfortable typing. Uh, the other thing is that there's this lip here on the keyboard and you may not be able to see it, but it makes it a little bit awkward to type because you don't really have a place to rest your fingers or your palm. And that kind of hinders the typing ability here. And what I noticed by typing on this last night is that some of the keys also will not register it. Like for example here, so if you can see here, I'm pressing O and it's not, it's not always registering. So it depends on the angle. If you go full on, pushing down in the middle, it seems to be okay. But if you're kind of like in an angle, which you will be typing sometimes because of the, the way it's, you know, your fingers move about, it won't register the key. There's an on-screen keyboard and the on-screen keyboard works pretty well. And you can close that. So of course that's going to work well when you are when you got this separated. What about battery life? Well, I'm currently at 27% battery life and it's showing about an hour 16 minutes. Um, I don't really know exactly what the total battery life is going to be like. I would probably say five hours if you're very lightly using the unit. Now the problem is because this is a Windows unit, it will periodically try to pull Windows updates. And if it's pulling a Windows update, that's a fairly demanding task. And that will just destroy your battery life completely. And it's at 75% brightness. The brightness is great, by the way. I haven't had any problems with it. There is a camera on the unit, both front and back. And I'll have some test imagery up on the screen for you folks so you can take a look at the quality. Don't expect stellar quality. Remember, folks, this is only a $56 tablet so it's not a great you know it's not gonna have great imaging capabilities but it's there if you need it you got it okay as far as the web browser goes uh, I got Microsoft Edge running and I found that Edge works the best on this one gigabyte platform rather than Google Chrome Google Chrome seems to be a little bit more laggy and you can see here it it, it scrolls really fast there's no problem with the scrolling and I got 
a YouTube. This is one of my videos here and I'll try to play back part of this. So let me just kind of jump around a little bit here. So we can see some spinning. It is a little bit slower than you know a fast tablet would be. And I got it in HD mode so it's in 720p. And again, the resolution of this tablet is 1280 by 800. So there's no lag whatsoever on the video playback, which is to be expected because of the hardware acceleration on it. But this is where the inconsistency of the one, gig one gigabyte system comes into play because sometimes it'll run really, really quickly. But when you start loading up a whole lot of tabs on here, or if you dare to try to run another aggressive application, it's just gonna be really, really slow. In fact, it's going to feel like an eternity. What I would say is if you are getting this tablet, you want to use this for a specific purpose, a specific program. It doesn't excel very well in web browsing per se, because generally when I like to get a tablet with good web browsing capabilities, I like to have that paired with good battery life. And this doesn't seem to provide that. There are better options out there, but this is a Windows tablet. So if you're looking for Windows specific applications and you need to run a Windows specific application or, or hardware, for example, um, I had my Audio-Technica USB microphone attached to this OTG and it worked just fine. And I had a hub attached to this OTG so you could run multiple USB devices at the same time. And it, was, it, it worked perfectly fine. There was no problem whatsoever. Overall, do I think this tablet is worth it? Uh, it was $56, so I would say, yeah, it's definitely worth the $56 for my purposes at least because, like I said, I did, I did have the purpose of running a single Windows application that I wanted to run on a device like this, and it definitely fulfilled my needs. But I use this as a general purpose tablet for everyday browsing and activities and things like that. Probably not. There's better options out there these days, and it probably won't cost you a whole lot more either. In fact, there can be some comparisons against the tablets out there for a similar price. Uh, for example, the most popular would be the Amazon Kindle 7 inch, which sells for a little bit less. And how does that compare to this unit? Well, we'll probably have a future episode making a comparison between the two, so uh, stay tuned for that. And I hope you'll find this review to be informative for you. If so, uh, subscribe to my channel and you can receive some future review updates as well. Thank you.